Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial. It's the five minute guide to getting started with Photoshop. I don't wanna waste a lot of time on the intro. My name is Nathaniel Dodson. Uh, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, tap the notification bell because subscribing, well, it doesn't do much of anything anymore these days on YouTube. Uh, let's go learn a little bit about Photoshop. Let's go. All right, no five minute guide to Photoshop would be complete without first creating a new document by going file new. And I'm gonna make this new document 1920 by 1080 pixels in size. See, it's easy to make a new document, but because we're here for the photographers, let's get some photos into Photoshop so we can get to work. Now, we're able to drag an image or multiple images into Photoshop from your Finder or Explorer window. Just drop them in here on the top bar. It'll open them right up. Uh, we can also go File Open and even hold down Command or Control and select multiple files, open them right up in Photoshop. Easy peasy. I'm gonna close that first Photoshop document we created and let's get to work on the first image. Now, to navigate around an image in Photoshop, first grab the zoom tool, click a couple times to zoom in, hold your space bar, drag, you know, drag and navigate around, explore some stuff, hold down Alt or Option, click a couple times, it'll zoom back out, or you can hit the little fit screen button uh, at the top of your window there to view the entire image. Layers, they're an essential part of experiencing Photoshop, very, very useful as well. Hit the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. I'm gonna create a few new layers here. I'm going to use the brush tool as well. Just paint some random lines on each of these layers and look at how the layers work. They work just like layers of a sandwich. Stack them right up. The stuff on the top is on top. The stuff on the bottom is on the bottom. Pretty straightforward, but very important to understand. We can use the little eyeball icon. You can shut off any layer, hide it temporarily from view. Uh, we can also use the opacity sliders at the top of the layer dialog box, the layer panel, and change the visibility of whatever layer we have selected. We also have this drop down menu full of blend modes and they change the way that layers interact with each other. They mess with the contrast and color, all sorts of amazing and wonderful and incredible things. You should really jump in there and explore that a little bit. Now to delete any layer, simply drag it to the trash can or you can shift click multiple layers and drag multiple layers to the trash. Creating selections is a really important part of Photoshop as well. You can use the marquee tools here, drag out a selection. Once we've created a selection, we can hold down the shift key and drag out additional pieces to that selection and have one big selection we keep building out or hold down your alter option key and click and drag to trim away bits of the selection. Uh, now you can deselect anything by going select, deselect, but between you and I, I think you should just try to memorize the the hotkey command or control D. It is probably the hotkey I use the most every single day in Photoshop. Huge time saver. I'm going to use the lasso tool as well. We use this for freeform selections. Just click and drag to make a selection of literally anything you want. I'm going to use the lasso tool, drag a selection around our subject. We're going to make her disappear by going edit fill and choosing the content aware feature. Now this is the old content aware fill, but it can still work really well in a lot of different applications. And look at that. She's gone. Pretty amazing. Now, for a photo with a well-defined subject, click on the Quick Selection tool, and there's a little Select Subject button that will appear in the top toolbar, which is going to allow Photoshop to use its artificial intelligence engine, find the subject, and do the best it can to select it. It usually does a pretty okay job. We can grab our Move tool and move this model around. We don't want to move her around right now. I just wanted to show you Select Subject. Command or Control D to deselect that. Let's say, though, we wanted to move her eye from her eye to her forehead. We'll grab the Lasso tool, ring a selection around her eye, and then go Select modify feather. We're going to feather our selection by 30 pixels. This is going to blur the edges of the selected area, soften them up a lot, and then we'll copy this up to a new layer by going layer, new, new layer via copy. It's going to pop her eyeball up onto a new layer, and then we'll use the move tool to drag this right up to her forehead, and now you can see she has three eyes. A little ridiculous, I know. So let's undo this by using the undo command, edit undo there. We can do it multiple times. Command or control Z is the hotkey, really useful. We can go window history to open up the history panel and see a visual list of all the things we've done in our Photoshop document. Click any point, you can jump right back to it, easy. Now let's talk about the clone stamp tool. It's pretty cool. It allows you to duplicate things very easily. Hold down the alter option key and click the area from which you want to duplicate. So here I'm going to sample the skin texture on her forehead and I'm going to paint that over her eyebrow to remove it. Doesn't look all that great. It's not blended very well at all, but it's just an example. And I think you can see the point here. We could do the same thing, by the way, by sampling her eyeball, right? Alt or option clicking her eyeball and we can duplicate that up to her forehead that way as well. I'm going to undo all of that. Let's get rid of some skin blemishes, maybe some little markings and maybe a flyaway hair or two. This is pretty easy. We're going to use the spot healing brush right here. Just paint over the stuff you want to you want to go away and it'll go away. 
You can adjust this brush by right clicking and making the brush size bigger or smaller uh, and just play around with this brush. The more you use it, the more you'll get a feel for it and understand how it works. It's really pretty easy though. Now let's adjust the brightness and contrast of our image. You can adjust all sorts of things with any image using the adjustments under image adjustments. Here we're going to mess with the brightness contrast adjustment. I'll boost the contrast. I'll darken the image a little bit. Hit OK to commit the changes. Boom, it's done. Now let's also check out a levels adjustment. This is a super popular way to make tonal adjustments on any photo. You can drag the black and white points inward. It's going to increase the contrast. You can also play with the black and white output points. Drag those inward to reduce contrast, but it does it in a really unique and interesting and faded way. We can do this on an image like this beetle image here where there's a ton of contrast. Open that levels up. Let's drag the black and white output slider points in and we're going to lift the shadows, flatten them out. And we're also going to mute those highlights and overall mute the whole image a little bit. I'm not going to keep those changes though. Again, just an example. Let's talk about the color of this image. Let's open up that hue saturation adjustment and play with the overall saturation and hue sliders. Look at how much this changes the image. Kind of messes things up. Hold the alter option key, hit the reset button uh, to just bring us back to normal and then choose a little finger scrubby slider tool hold down your commander control key and click on the color here i'm going to select the hood of the car and i'm going to slide this to adjust the hue of that color and photoshop will select a range of colors very close to the color i selected that yellowish color of the car and it's going to slide the hues around look at how beautiful that looks and once hue saturation has selected that range of colors you can change the saturation and lightness of that little range of colors as well it's so super easy hit okay to commit your changes and it's pretty awesome now photoshop also has a bunch of wonderful filters Filters. So let's jump into the filters menu. I'm going to choose to convert this image for smart filters because smart filters are awesome. And here I'm going to go blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set it to 20 pixels. Now, because this is a smart filter, and I know we haven't gotten into smart filters, but because it's a smart filter, I can hit the little arrow next to my layer over in the layers panel, double click the Gaussian blur filter name, and I can change my Gaussian blur from 20 pixels to something like 5 pixels. That's one of the beautiful things about smart filters. And if you don't like the filter, you can shut it off by hitting the eyeball icon or just drag it right down to the trash. Now, sharpening images, pretty simple. First, you always want to zoom in to 100% to get a perfect idea of how the sharpening is being applied to your image. And then go filter sharpen, smart sharpen. Just focus on the amount and radius sliders for now. Don't worry about the other stuff and confuse yourself. Play around until you get some sharpening you like. Hit OK to apply your sharpening, and I'm sure it's beautiful. Next, grab the zoom tool and hit the fit to screen button to zoom the image back out. Or hit command or control and the number zero to just view the entire image. Grab the crop tool, and we're going to start pushing and pulling the edges, adjusting this crop. Make our image exactly how we want it. You can even click on the image and drag it around underneath the crop to get it just perfect. Now, I did not check the little delete cropped pixels option. So I can enter back into cropping mode if I if I commit this change by simply clicking once with the crop tool and then tweak and adjust my crop again until it's perfect. Hit the check icon. Now I've got my image. Let's export it so everyone in the world can see it. Go, file, export, export as. In this dialog box, we've got all kinds of great information. I want to go ahead and set the output scale to 33% to knock down the image dimensions from huge to 1800 by 900 pixels. I'm going to choose JPEG as the format. I'm going to reduce the quality to 65%. It's going to compress that file down just wonderfully. Then I'm going to hit export all, choose where on my hard drive I want to save this thing, and that's it. This is my five minute guide to Photoshop. Maybe it's more like seven or eight minutes. I don't know. There's a hundred thousand different things you can do in Photoshop though, ladies and gentlemen. This is just the very tip of the spear, the very tip of the spear. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and follow along with all of the Photoshop tutorials I have and that I continue to make right here. Thank you for watching. All right, well, there you have it. The five minute, six minute, seven minute, whatever it was guide to getting started with Photoshop. I hope you I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope I wasn't talking too fast. I probably was. Make sure you slow it down on YouTube a little bit. We had to get through it as quickly as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, for everything we learned about Photoshop today, from zooming and selecting stuff, changing colors, sharpening, exporting images, you name it, that's it. Get it, got it, good. I closed my eyes there for a second because I didn't know what else to say. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds in tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.